So what you can see here is an old flash animation for the fetch decode execute cycle. Um, it was created uh, for Hartismere um, school. Um, now this animation isn't available anymore because as I said it's, it's flash and flash isn't supported. So I'm gonna just talk you through it. Um, I'm using an old Adobe flash player uh, to show you. So it says the animation is gonna show the process of the fetch execute decode cycle of the CPU. Um, and some of the steps that have been simplified just to aid in understanding. Um, I just want to talk through, first of all, what you can see on the screen for the CPU. Um, so let's have a look. First of all, here's our RAM um, and memory. Uh, and in our memory, we have some addresses. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Um, so in addresses one, two, and three, we've got some instructions. Um, this means load the data from address five. This, this means add the data from address six. And this means store the data to address seven. Um, and in address areas five and six, uh, we've got the numbers 12 and eight, which are values. And um, within the CPU, we've then got some buses. So here's our bus, this black line here. Uh, and you'll see later that this will be separated into the address bus, which is where addresses um, are transported data buses where data is transported and the control bus where only control signals are transported. We've got our control unit here. We've got our arithmetic logic unit which does the calculations. And we've got our accumulator which stores the current value that's been accumulated. Then we have some registers. We've got the program counter uh, and this is showing us that uh, the next instruction uh, in the program counter is going to come from memory address 1. We've got the memory address register where we store um, the current address that's being used. And the memory data register where we store the current data that's being used. And the current instruction register which shows us the current instruction uh, that is being run. So if we click on play now, we can see that the first thing that's happened is that the program counter has been transferred to the memory address register. So the memory address register now has a memory address of one. Next, what's going to happen is the control unit is sending a signal uh, and it sent that signal from the memory address register and it's collected from the memory address register the data that's needed on the address bus. I said data, but what I really mean is an address, but an address, of course, is data in this sense. And in memory, it's now showing that what it's going to do, this is the fetch part of the fetch decode execute cycle. And it says here that it's going to fetch whatever is in memory instruction one, which is load five. So if we watch what happens next, we can now see the green dot moving which is showing that it's taken the data load five, which is actually an instruction, um, but it treats data and instructions the same in terms of where they'll be loaded. And it has put that into the memory data register. So that has now been put in as load five. Next thing that happens is that load five gets pushed into the current instruction register. So that is the current instruction that is going to be carried out by the CPU. Now that's important because while that instruction is being carried out, the memory data register will change. And so we need to be able to remember, or the CPU needs to remember what that instruction is. So we've now fetched uh, that data. Next thing now is to send that instruction to the control unit so that it can be decoded. So this is the decode part of the fetch decode execute. And the control unit can see that it needs to load the data from address register, sorry, address um, number five. So what's going to happen now is the control bus goes up and it increases the program counter just to say that the next instruction that will be happening will be coming from memory number two, memory address two. And that is just because we're going to be changing data 
in the memory address register and the memory data register. So we need to know, a CPU needs to know where the next data is going to come from. The so next thing that happens is this uh, control signal goes up to the memory address register and says, right, well, the control unit Wanted to wants to load data from address five, so let's put address five into the memory address register, um, and so that knows that then the next area of memory that's going to be used is address number five. Now, can you see the importance now of why we had to move the what was in the current memory address register, which was the uh, or, or increase the program counter from one to two before we lost what was in the memory address register. So that location five now needs to be loaded. So watch what happens now. The address bus goes along with the control bus and says to the memory, okay, I need whatever's in address five. So the memory address five has got the value of 12. So we now know that, that data has got to be loaded. So that now gets sent back along the data bus because it's data and that memory data uh, that data gets put into the memory data register so that is a value of 12 and that went along the data bus because it's data so now the cpu has got this value of 12 because it was asked to load from address 5 the value of 12. now the current instruction that's in the control unit is to load that value so what's now going to happen is that data goes along the data bus and it gets loaded into the accumulator so the accumulator has now loaded data 12. The value 12 has been put into the accumulator. That came from address 5 because we loaded address 5. So we've now loaded the value 12 from address memory 5 into the accumulator and that is the end of executing the load instruction. So we can now move on to the next part the fetching the next instruction so could you see there that program counter number two moved into the memory address register so we now know that the next instruction is going to be fetched from memory address register two so let's do the fetch so the address bus address number two goes along with the control bus data to say that we're fetching the data and we're going to fetch the instruction but it could be data from memory address two so it gets put into the memory data register and that is add six. So add six is our next instruction. So that gets moved into the current instruction register and the control bus will take that to the control unit so that it can be decoded. So we've done the fetch, we're now decoding um, and then we'll be able to execute. So it decodes it and it says, right, well, what I've got to do is I've got to add whatever's in memory address six to the current value of the accumulator. It's not adding the number six, it's adding whatever's in memory address six. So let's watch that happen. So first of all, our control bus goes up and it says, right, well, we're gonna increase the program counter to three, so we're ready for the next fetch. And it goes up again and it says, right, well, we're adding six, which is address six, so I'm gonna change the memory address register to six, so we know, or the, the CPU knows, that, that is where to get the uh, next instruction from. So now along the address bus, uh, with the control bus saying that we're going to fetch, it fetches that data from memory address six, which is eight. That value of eight is now stored in the memory data register. And because we're adding that, that now gets taken to the accumulator because the decoding has already been done. But how is that going to get added? Well, we've got the arithmetic logic unit, which does all the calculating. So along with the control bus to give the instruction to say, right, add these numbers together, 12 gets added to eight. So the accumulator now has the value of 20. So we've now executed the instruction of add six. So we're ready to take number three from the program counter, put it into the memory address register and that means that we're now ready to fetch the next instruction. So let's watch what happens. So the address bus goes along with the control bus signal to say fetch, and it returns along the data bus the value, which happens to be an instruction for memory address three, which is ST07. 
which means, well, well, I'll tell you what it means when we go to the control unit. So that gets moved into the current instruction register, which now gets moved down to the control unit to be decoded. Now the decoding says that ST07 means store whatever value is in the accumulator at the moment in address 7. Notice it's also increased the program counter to 4, so we're ready to fetch the next instruction. So, let's watch what happens. Well, the address has got to be updated, so the control bus is going to update the memory address register to be 7. We now take from the accumulator the data along the data bus and put it into the memory data register. This now means that that can be taken to memory because it's got to be in that memory data register before it can go to memory. Now, along the address bus goes address 7, along the data bus goes the value 20 from the MDR, and along the control bus goes the instruction that we're going to store that value from the MDR of 20 into address number 7. And that has now completed the execute cycle. Now the next instruction is instruction number 4, and instruction number four is empty. So there are no further instructions to carry out here. So what you've seen this go through is three full fetch, decode and execute cycles.